My brothers and sisters, good morning. How are you all doing today? Very good. It's a beautiful day. 2023 is my third year in Mississippi. You know. And since 2020, I have presided, I think it, about, it's about 15 to 20 weddings for three years. You know. And someone asked me, Father, how could you give an advice or a homily for married couples or families if you are not married and you don't have wife or kids? You, know, you don't have any experience with these things. How could you reflect on marriage? And I said, well, that's a good question. <laughs> First of all, I come from a family. Okay? My family were like a pack of wolves, you know, with more drama but less howling. <laughs> Secondly, I live in a community with two priests, Father David, Father Jack, and two brothers, Brother Diego and Brother Andy. I know that when, when you live in the community, you live together as a family. And when you live as a family, you start realizing that your mass and my mass are actually the same mass. And living in the community is the same as your family. It means that you must start sharing everything, including your snacks, right? <laughs> the first reading today highlights the importance of community and the sharing resources in building a strong and faithful community. It is a powerful reminder of the importance of the community, devotion, unity in building a faithful and vibrant Christian community. We are a community. When Jesus appeared to his disciples, to the community, Thomas was not with the community. He was outside. And when they told them, hey, We've seen the Lord. We've seen Jesus. He's risen. He's alive now. He refused to believe. He needed a physical proof of Jesus' resurrection before he could believe. His doubt was a sign of humanity, just like the rest of us. You know. Thomas struggled to understand the mysteries of faith, to accept the things that beyond his comprehension. But finally, when he saw the truth, he proclaimed one of the most powerful statements in the entire Bible. What did he say? My Lord and my God. It's a personal statement. It's so powerful. Brothers and sisters, the shift from doubt to the statement, my Lord and my God, is also identified as a cognitive reappraisal. Cognitive reappraisal is a concept that refers to the process of interpretation of, a, of an experience or situation in a manner that changes the emotional impact. For example, when I was a kid, the one who was nagging me when I forgot to pray was mom. The one who was mumbling at me when I came home late was mom. The one who was busy going back and forth to my room when I was sick was 
mom. And the happiest person when I graduated was mom. Well, where is dad? Dad was mostly quiet. He just waited, live, waiting, uh, waited in the living room when I came home late. He just touched my shoulder just to wake me up. He didn't say any words, you know. He just waited outside of the hospital room when I was sick. And he just shook my hand when I was ordained. He didn't give me any hug, you know. He just shook my hand and said, congratulations. That's dad. He seems cold. He didn't talk a lot. I didn't know but if it's his fatherly thing or he didn't really care. I doubted that he loved me at that time. But now I know speaking was not his expertise. But now I know that it was dad who asked mom to go back and forth to my room to check on me, to check my temperature. That was dad. It was dad who asked mom to call me every week to ask, how am I doing? And now I know that was dad, the proudest one when I was ordained. He was the one telling his na- the neighbors and friends that his kid is now a priest. Now I know that dad wants to get close to me like my mom was. And I know that he loved me so much. Based on this situation, you know, I doubted at the beginning, but then I could reappraise the situation. In this case, Thomas, Thomas' doubt had been causing him emotional distress. You, know. you can imagine his reaction to the other disciples when they told him, hey, I, we saw Jesus. He's alive. And Thomas would have said, you saw his body nailed on the cross. You saw he was not breathing. He was dead. You know that his heart had been pierced. You're all raving. You know? It's getting to you. Get grip on yourself. Unless I can put my hand on his side, I refuse to believe. But my brothers and sisters, when he was able to see the truth of Jesus' resurrection, he was able to reappraise the situation and find his peace and contentment. My brothers and sisters, Thomas teaches us that doubt is not the opposite of faith, but it is part of our faith. It is through doubts and questions we grow in our understanding of God and relationship with Him. And when we finally found the answer, our faith becomes stronger and more meaningful to us. Brothers and sisters, let us remember that faith is always dynamic. It is deeply personal and spiritual. Faith is closely tied to our emotions and experiences. Our faith can be challenged by personal crisis or a spiritual awakening. It is the journey, not the destination. It is the journey rather than the destinations. It's not just about all, oh, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. No, it is the process to get there. Brothers and sisters, we may start with a basic belief of understanding of faith, but as we learn and grow, our faith can evolve and deepen. And when we found the answer, it becomes the most privileged as Thomas touched Jesus with his hands and said, 
my Lord and my God. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.